Hey everyone, if you're new here, thank you so much for checking out my channel. If you've been here for a while, thank you also from the bottom of my heart for sticking around and watching all the videos that I do and of course leaving comments below. This is a dog training community channel and what we do here is we're uplifting and we're encouraging to one another. Any negativity will get blocked and deleted. I always support feedback and questions, but moving forward, we really wanna make sure that we are positively building each other up to the most important thing is helping our dogs out at home. Today, I'm gonna to be giving you three easy to follow along simple tricks on how to eliminate dog anxiety and stress and also be proactive and not create any dog anxiety or stress. Here we go. But first, coffee. No, but seriously guys, I'm, no coffee, really. The first thing I wanna talk about is something very simple. What is the definition of anxiety? Hmm. Yep, pretty interesting stuff. So moving forward, what does that mean to us and our dogs? The first thing I wanna talk about is something I see a lot at the Upstate Canine Academy. Usually the anxiety in dogs and stress in dogs is created by us, the dog owner or the handler or the owner. And unless you have some sort of genetic problem and the dog was born that way and the rest of the litter is born that way and mom and dad are that way, chances are the anxiety that you're seeing at home is from you. So how to, how to get out of that situation is not that simple. However, there are some three easy tips that I'm gonna go over right now to help you guys out at home. Number one, you were guilty. I know I'm guilty, I've done this before. When you're leaving your house, do not make a big deal out of something that doesn't need to be a big deal. So when you leave, there shouldn't be any of that goo goo gaga, I love you, I miss you, you're creeping out the door, and then slam the door. Because what happens is, is you're marking to the dog, and what we call marking behaviors in the dog training world, is you're basically telling the dog, hey, I'm about to leave for a long period of time. And of course your dog hates that, your dog loves you, you love your dog, it's a terrible thing. But if you make that a process, and you basically are telling the dog, hey, this is about to happen, you know that thing that you really hate that I do every day, Monday through Friday? I'm about to do it. And if you're marking that behavior and you're telling the dog it's about to happen, that creates anxiety. The dog goes, oh boy, this is the time that I don't like. There could be positive anxiety too through positive things like going for a walk, coming home. These things are positive. So you're adding something to the mix to make things potentially better, but you're creating negative impact on the dog's behavior and mental stimulation. And so what happens is, is the dog gets overstimulated and they go, I don't know what we're gonna do, but I, I ba, 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 ba. So what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna to talk to your dog before you leave. It's very simple. If you've already started to create anxiety and your dog's getting a little nervous when you leave and whining and pacing and barking, just walk out. That's the best thing to do if you started to create this stuff or if you're already dealing with some of this stuff. Guys, listen, I know, it's not that easy. You just wanna say goodbye to Fluffy one more time before you go to work, but you have to give the dog the benefit of the doubt and understand that that creates stress to the dog because they're trying to figure out what the heck you're saying and they know that you're leaving, which sucks. And so, in conclusion, if you're having these conversations before you leave and you're making this big drawn out process, getting the dog basically amped up to leave the dog for four to six hours, not a good idea. You're gonna create stress and anxiety because the dog knows you're about to leave and they can't go with you. Now, if you have anxiety and you have stress in the dog already, one of the big things that you can do on your day off or if you take time off from work, is you can go out and you start to desensitize this whole process of you leaving for four to six hours, because that's actually why the stress is there. It's because when you leave, they know you're gonna be gone for that big extended period of time, and they don't like that. So going out and coming back in, and going out and coming back in, and going out and coming back in, and change up the duration. Go out for two minutes, go out for 30 seconds, come back in. So the dog, the mental state of the dog will be like, oh, so you're not leaving for four hours like or six hours like you normally do. And you break it down. And then that way, when you're ready to actually go to work on Monday, you just walk out and the dog's gonna go, huh, okay, I'll wait for you to get back like you normally do. And so breaking down that whole process through increments on your days off or just waking up a little bit earlier before you go to work to break down that process is a really great idea. Okay, now this is a big one. All across the board for all sorts of behaviors, Exercise is so important for dogs. They have four legs, we have two. They like to eat cat poop and roll around in dead mice, we don't. They're animals, we have to remember that. What we're dealing with and what we're living with at home 
has to go out and get mental and physical exercise and outlets. So if this means waking up a little bit earlier before you go to work, so be it. But you have to understand that if you're not exercising your dog properly or even at all, it's gonna be even harder for your dog as they're sitting home just tick, 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 waiting for you to come home. It's gonna make that stress and anxiety even more because they have so much built up and they can't outlet it on anything. And to be honest, listen, I know how, it's, how it is, guys. You come home, you wanna crack a beer and sit on the couch or drink tea or whatever you do. The last thing you wanna do after a long day is go for a really long walk, especially if you live in climates that's super cold and super hot. I get it, but we have to remember that we can't complain about the stress and anxiety we create due to the lack of due diligence of us actually exercising the animal we have at home. So I know it sounds silly, but on YouTube, when I go to say, hey, how do I charge my phone? I don't know. These little things can really make a difference in your dog's life. So number two on a recap is just exercise. Wake up a little bit earlier, throw ball. But also, one thing that you probably haven't been thinking about is mental stimulation, mental exercise. So doing something with your dog, even if it's basic obedience, sit, down, stay, heal, whatever it is, tricks, treats, whatever you can do to get the dog's mind unwound a little bit. Dogs can run for, depending on the breed, five to 10 miles straight. Some dogs can't do a mile, but you have to understand that dogs are so active and so primitive and so primal that they can run for a long period of time and it's not gonna bother them like it bothers us or like me, but the mental is something that you guys can take advantage of. You can sit at home and mentally exhaust your dog with just getting them to think and do random things so their mind exerts that energy that they so desperately need throughout the day. Number three, last but not least on this list for the top three things I would suggest to eliminate anxiety and stress, you guessed it, coffee break. No, seriously, number three is give them something to do while you're gone. So some of you are already probably ahead of the game on this, some of you may not. But this is some interesting things that people are like, oh, that's such a great idea. And if I can give you guys one thing to walk away and your dog thanks you for it, ultimately, as you guys know, that makes the world to me that I can help your dogs at home, even if it's just one. So if it's just one and this is information that you guys really like, don't forget to leave comments and tell me about it so we can chat. So on number three, guys, just type in Google, dog walker in my area, look them up, look at their ratings, look at their reviews, see what you like, what you don't like, look at their pricing, etc. Call them over, they'll meet your dog, they'll meet you, they'll find out where you live and all that fun stuff, and hopefully they don't go through all your private stuff, no, I'm kidding, but seriously, it's super easy. You can get somebody to do it for like 20 bucks, 30 bucks on a higher end, depending on where you live, and they'll come as many times as you want throughout the day, Monday through Friday, sometimes weekends, to let your dog out while you work. I know it's, it's, it's a little bit uh, financially a burden, it could be, but you gotta understand, like we invited our dogs into our houses, they didn't let themselves in and say, hey, can I live with you? It's something that we have to be, take responsibility for. It's super important because you'll create stress and anxiety, especially in younger active dogs who are just sitting at home literally doing nothing. Um, which leads me to my second tip on rule number three or tip number three, which leads me to daycare. Same strategy as, as what we're talking about with the dog walker, go on Google find a doggy daycare near me and look at their reviews, go in there, do a consultation, see what you like, what you don't like. Um, just make sure that there's people in the back, making sure that they're with the dogs. That's important. I've, I've heard like doggy daycares just letting the dogs play with nobody back there. It's crazy. But so just do your research on that and you'll find the right fit for you and your dog. But you can spend 20 to 30 dollars a day for your dog to literally go and run around with a bunch of dog friends which is fantastic versus sitting home doing nothing so those things will really really help your dog exert that mental and physical exercise that they do so desperately need to do but the other easy thing that you guys can do when you're gone if you haven't already is give them something to chew on like a kong i use marrow bones i stuff marrow bones with peanut butter and freeze them that's really great and you can find things like bully sticks you can do all sorts of different stuff to really make sure that your dog is ac acu oh, no. uh, 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 occupied Sorry, when you're gone because again, they're just trying to figure out something to do and then even that's not enough. So you may have to mix in a dog walker with a bully stick or something like that. And so the other thing that you can do while you're gone is just leave something on to cut the white noise. So they're not listening to the neighbors. They're not listening to all the fun and active dogs that are getting walked outside and they're not watching people through the windows, things like that. So leaving a radio on or the TV on to cut that white noise is also really important as well if your dog has that stress about hearing everything and anxiety about what's going on around me.
So in recap, guys, number one, don't make a big deal if it doesn't have to be. Number two, exercise, so important. Give your dog mental and physical exercise before and after you come home from work. It'll release and decompress all that built up stress and anxiety that sits there while you're at at work or hanging out with your family and friends. Yeah. Number three, give them something to do. So hiring a dog walker, getting a daycare, coming home from work on a lunch break to walk them around. Um, a big backyard is better than sitting at home, but it's still not enough. Giving them something to do like a Kong or a frozen bone, leaving the radio on, leaving the TV on, having your neighbor pop over, giving them something to do while you're on that big span of not coming home. Because you got to think, our dogs love us. Being in the same room with us is so rewarding to them. It makes all these chemicals go off in their brain and they love it. When we're not around, they get pretty bored. So making sure you have something to do for your dog if they have anxiety and stress. Take this with a grain of salt like anything that we do here on the channel. This isn't for every single dog. Every single dog is different. But if you are having stressful uh, situations and anxiety situations going on in your house, these are three really easy to do tips that you can start right now to help make that go away and to help proactively prevent these types of things. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really, really do mean it. We are growing on YouTube like crazy and it's all because of you guys. I thank you so much. If you keep liking these videos, leaving comments, this is the community we're creating. The, the, the coolest dog training community on YouTube and I'm so proud uh, to be a part of it and to be with you guys and hanging out and answering questions. I answer every single question in the comments below and I appreciate your feedback regardless if you don't have a comment. Thank you guys so much and I will talk to you next time. Peace.